Okay. Yeah, the sweet spot. Okay, there we go. All right. Well, Alexander, thanks for uh, joining the podcast. Uh, I appreciate you coming on, taking the time and uh, super grateful, uh, you know, that you were able to do this. And I'm really excited about the conversation that we're going to have. I think, uh, you know, I, I, I love the content you put out there and uh, I love your energy. So I'm hoping the listeners can get the same. So definitely excited. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me on. Absolutely honored to be here, brother, and uh, very excited to have a chat with you today. Yeah, yeah. And so before we get into it, uh, you know, I wanted to kind of give you an opportunity to talk about, you know, kind of introduce yourself and some of the work you're doing. And I know you're kind of the, the face behind the unmasked man. So maybe explain what that means. And, uh, you know, I've got some questions for you. So we'll get into that. But yeah. Yeah, so um, my spiritual journey or, or, or transformation started seven years ago. Um, it started from a, a wound. I was a man in the hamster wheel, um, working very, very intensely. Um, had the job ticked in the box, had the financial security ticked in the box, the girlfriend. Um, thought I had it all, all kind of made, you know, I was 27 at the time. I, I was... I was I was going where society told me I needed to go and um, I, I got burnt out. I, I ended up a culmination of too many drugs, too much alcohol, too much pressure, too much stress, too much taken on at an early age. And um, I ended up in the States in Mount Sinai Hospital in New York um, and I had a stroke, which was very, very young age to mm -hmm. to have that but the body keeps the score and it tells you uh, <laughs> where or when to stop and from there i i suffered with you know i went down the dark night of the soul my own mental health journey depression suicide and so because of my connection with that wound as a man i started the unmasked man as a consequence. And to me, you know, when I was thinking about names and coming up with a concept that was so much bigger than just my journey and, and could actually signify the journey of so many other men, it was, you know, what do I find myself doing when I'm around men? Well, I end up wearing masks. I actually end up wearing masks in a lot of, a lot of situations or did, should I say, I don't uh, so much now, or I hope I don't at least. Um, but uh, I ended up not being authentic, not being me and not knowing how to communicate with other men. And the unmasked man came about to really unmask this bullshit persona that we can sometimes put on, mm -hmm. um, how we relate to each other and to really strip back these, you know, the sarcastic man, the toxic man, the I'm, I, I don't feel my emotions, man, the like, let's just strip it all back. Let's get to the core. Let's be mm -hmm. human. Let's be honest, let's be authentic, and let's meet another brother, another man in a space of connection, of truth, of vulnerability, of courage. And, you know, I will share my wounds, you share yours, and let's openly talk about what it is to feel and what we struggle with as men. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, and I think that's, uh, you know, a lot of great points you touched on there. And I appreciate you sharing your own kind of what brought you to this space, you know, and we all kind of have that defining moment. And I can resonate with that because I was kind of in the same boat, um, you know, checking all the boxes, uh, mm -hmm. basically what society tells you to do. And, and then at one point, you don't feel real because to your point, uh, you're wearing a mask. And I mean, to extend that, I feel like, you know, I, I would wear a mask around everyone, not only just around men, it was family, friends, partners, you know, anyone, um, regardless of gender. And uh, I think some of the things you've touched on getting down to the core is important in order to be um, just in alignment with ourselves, but also being authentic with everyone else. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I don't know how to live unauthentically anymore. Like my body, my nervous system doesn't let me do it. You know, I, yeah. I, 
even if I wanted to 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 go back that way or to lie or to kind of dishonor or or, or cut my own boundaries off or not not give myself that self respect, mm-hmm. it wouldn't last long enough because I, I know now how false it is and how there's no foundation there. It was my foundations were built on sand, and I want to be as authentic and as vulnerable and as truthful as I can moving forward, so it can open up uh, conversations with others to share their courage to share their journeys and to share their experiences so we can all blossom and grow and support each other on this difficult journey called life yeah no no for sure i appreciate that and i think one of the things you mentioned like when you had that incident in your life with the stroke and uh, you know you use the term the body keeps the score which i'm assuming you're referencing the book yeah uh, <laughs> a little by, bit, yeah. yeah 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 um so what was it like to be in that space where, you know, you, you think you've, you're doing all the right things. Mm. And then all of a sudden, one day waking up that and realizing that clearly there's something that you're not doing in alignment with yourself. That's why your body is kind of rejecting something. Yeah, it's frightening. It's, it's frightening because I was overriding my own self. I wasn't listening. Mm -hmm. I wasn't listening to my heart. I wasn't listening to my body. I wasn't listening to my needs. Mm -hmm. I wasn't respecting my time. I was a yes man. I was a people pleaser. I wanted everyone to like me. And that gets intolerable. That gets, it's, it's so, it's so suffocating. Not everyone is going to like me. And, and I, I can't say yes to everyone. Otherwise I'll split myself into a thousand pieces. And quite frankly, that's what I did. And I, I took on too much. And I, now I noticed that pattern in me still, it's still there. You know, it's a residue. It's something that can't just be shifted overnight, but I, I've thankfully learned so many tools now to bring in the holistic approach of self-care, of respecting my boundaries, of, of saying no, of getting used to hearing no from others as well, mm-hmm. and to manage my, my body, my, my, uh, my physical, mental and, and spiritual well-being. Um, and I think I'm, I'm getting pretty good at it now. It feels good. <laughs> no, that's amazing. So I guess, and, and one of the challenges people have, like in, in, you know, I think a lot of us struggle with it is that whole notion of being able to say no, right? Mm-hmm. Because you almost feel obligated or you don't want to hurt someone or you don't want to damage a relationship. So for people that really struggle with that boundary setting, like what are some uh, tools or tips you can share that have worked for you. Um, and also being okay with just saying no, like just getting your head around that. First and foremost, we need to understand our self-worth because we're not going to be able to even say no, if we don't realize that we have a no within us, you know, that we are actually worthy of a different option. So, it, it's building that self-worth. It's, it's flexing that self-worth muscle and realizing that we can say no. And then when we go around and about saying no to an individual, it's sitting with that uncomfortable energy that that no creates. Because the minute it leaves your mouth and you, you might get a response from someone that's not used to hearing it, there is this right from for me and again i talk from my own experience the people please are suddenly like no 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 no. i didn't mean to say that you know it's it, it's like going off like a radar in my head and actually i want to kind of pull back my no and and say yes and i'm so getting comfortable with sitting in the uncomfortable mm-hmm. um and spending time i think away from society alone you know spending i know that doesn't directly answer the question into saying no, but the more we can spend time with ourselves, the more that we can, we can kind of go away for a weekend by ourselves, go on a holiday, read a book, like get used to spending time with ourselves. We, we realize that we have needs that we can look after ourselves, that we are not them, them being codependent, but being interdependent. And we can actually, then have the courage to build and flex that muscle of setting stronger boundaries and creating our time for us, not mm-hmm. time for everyone else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's a couple of things that you mentioned in there that I want to just 
highlight a little bit further. So, you know, starting with what you said, being comfortable in the uncomfortable, and that's where the most growth happens when we are making ourselves comfortable in the unknown or, or just stepping outside of our comfort zone. That is when we grow. Right. And then the other thing you talked about is finding that solitude and being comfortable with that as well. And I think a lot of us struggle um, because we don't want to be alone. We don't want to be alone with our thoughts. We don't want to be alone just for the sake of being alone. But I think that's, again, where a lot of, for me personally, growth happens is when I'm alone, whether it's reading a book or just challenging myself with my thoughts. Um, but it's okay to take that space for yourself because otherwise you're almost avoiding whatever you're trying to escape from, if that makes sense. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And especially with today's availability with technology, uh, at the drop of a hat, we are able to access the entire world and access so many different channels of communication. So limiting ourselves to step back and cut away from that and withdraw even more into ourselves and really have that solitude is very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. And, but once we are there and once again, we sit with that uncomfortableness, which is and can be torment at first, but the more we get used to it, the more we sit with uncomfortable emotions, let's take anxiety, for instance, mm -hmm. you know, I, I myself suffered with anxiety for years and thankfully I met the right teachers to encourage me to sit with it and once you see anxiety through um, an experience of which it hits a crescendo and you don't you know come in with a compulsion you don't look for that solitude and you actually really allow the anxiety to be felt and reach its maximum then the next time that you experience the anxiety that's triggered from the same incident, it can't reach the same peak in, that it reached before. And so if we continually sit with that, you know, let's take a phobia, for instance, like a, a spider. Mm -hmm. If you sit with a paper spider and then you sit with a plastic spider and you sit with a real spider, if you gradually train yourself mm -hmm. to deal with the uncomfortableness, eventually you can move through it until you're just sat there with the real spider and the real thing in you on you. And people might be going, oh, I could never do that in a million years, but phobias are not created from birth, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's, that's, that is the same for all the other emotions that we're feeling, the traumas that we feel, if we can go back, if we can feel it to heal it and we can transcend it and get used to it, then we can, we can uh, find that solitude that we're looking for. Yeah, yeah. And I think even in that example you gave in psychology, uh, they call it exposure therapy or, okay. yeah. or even shaping, right? Like you kind of shape yourself to deal with it. And I mean, another analogy is like, even when you stretch or you're doing yoga, you often get into poses where you feel the pain. Yep. And you can either run from it and be like, okay, I can't do this pose or you breathe through it, right? And that's kind of how I look at even anxiety or phobias where it's like, okay, it is painful or uncomfortable, but you gotta just breathe through it and, and then, you know, kind of set the, stretch yourself a little bit, right? So. Absolutely, and in those moments, just like we're in the yoga class, it's like, right, let's come back to the senses, let's come back to the sounds in the room, the smell, mm -hmm. the sight, maybe an object, a colorful object, or, you know, using those sensory organs to basically pull you back into the present so you can watch the anxiety as something moving through you, not actually something that is you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, for sure, for sure. And I, I guess another thing I wanted to tap into was, you know, you mentioned the whole personas. And that's something you you talk about quite a bit, even on your page. Um, do you mind like sharing a little bit like the different personas, how they show up and, and how we can as men, specifically be mindful of these personas? Do you mean the archetypes? Sorry, the archetypes? Yeah, the archetypes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, as, as I got into men's work, you know, a, a huge book that that represents a lot of men's work is is Robert Moore's King Warrior Lover Magician and for me they resonated not everybody resonates with the archetypes some people find their own way through 
working, especially with the shadow. But for me, they give a roadmap. They're a compass. They literally, I feel like I embody it now. And I, 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 I'm like, I go this way or I go that way. So um, not in accordance with Robert Moore's model, but, but similar models that the king sits in the north, the lover sits in the east, the warrior sits in the south, and the magician sits in the west. So if you're sat at the center of these four archetypes, each are uh, each house within them a triangular formation where you have the at the top of the, the triangle that archetype in its fullness. And then at the two lower corners, as the triangle spreads out, you have the two bipolar shadow parts of that archetype of which a man fluctuates in most of the time. Mm -hmm. So once we can start to identify our shadow and shadow, what do I mean by shadow? I mean, all of the things that the subconscious mind has suppressed. So, you know, anger, jealousy, envy, um, uh, like being being uh, taking pleasure in one's uh, pain and all these things that we say we they're not there and they are within mm -hmm. all of us right it, it, in some degree we can start to identify the patterns in which we're acting out with other people in our life and self-sabotaging our own self so for instance the let's take the king archetype which kind of rules rules over the kingdom of the lover, the warrior, and the magician. You have a king in his fullness. And what does a king in his fullness look like? He is a man that is welcoming. He allows everyone to sit at his table. Think King Arthur, Knights of the Round Table. You know, there's no, he is not higher than another man. Every man is equal. Mm -hmm. he, he wants to welcome other men into his kingdom. He knows when to ask for counsel. He won't just... Um, lead the way and become the tyrant and not listen to his people he and and this goes for the same way that we approach our mind like we don't want to push these negative thoughts away we want to bring all these emotions into consciousness and witness them and allow them all to be present within us so we don't have to suffer by fighting them anymore and the two bipolar shadow parts of of the king that play out of the tyrant on one hand, which is the active shadow. And then on the passive shadow is the weakling prince or the abdicated king. So what do those two things mean? Well, we all kind of know what a tyrant is. A mm -hmm. tyrant is a bully. He, he has got narcissistic energy in him. He wants to, to put another man down and he wants to control, manipulate and take power and dominate. Mm -hmm. And if I said all those things, we could probably see some of them moving in inside of us, maybe, but we just don't like to admit it. So this is what exploring the shadow is all about. And then if we go over to the abdicated king or the weakling prince, well, what is he? He is the man that doesn't even want to try. He is the man that lets the tyrant dominate him. He's the man that just wants to give up and you know, is the martyr and feel sorry for himself. And again, I, we can all probably relate yeah. in some capacity to that energy as well. So once we know that, that we have this active shadow and we have this passive shadow in us and they fluctuate from one bipolar part to the other, we can see them playing out and it's like, oh, I'm being the weakling again here, or I'm being the tyrant. I'm being over dominating of a situation or a scenario, right? Let me come back to my king in his fullness. And mm -hmm. how do I do that? Well, I come back to my heart. I come back to my consciousness. And I see these two parts of myself, which have just, you know, inherited wounds, you know, and also they're, they're kind of ancestral and societal wounds that have carried along for generation to generation. Mm -hmm. And I can see them play out and I can go, I don't want to act like that anymore. So I come to the top of the triangle the top of the pyramid and I, I I come back to my king in his fullness and my king in my fullness says right I see you both playing out and I I accept you both but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna buy into that story anymore and and so that's that's one of four archetypes explained and then you've got the the different ones so the lover is the you know the the, the addict or the impotent lover the warrior is the sadist or the masochist right so that the, the the man that is the bully or the coward yeah and then the magician is the detached manipulator or the denying innocent one. So here's the, here's the powerful shaman that uses his spiritual energy to manipulate others. Or here's the kind of person that plays dumb and doesn't actually want to show up and, you know, is just, he, he doesn't want to be there for himself. And 
the four energies all cross over. So Robert Moore does a great line where he talks about the king. If, uh, if the warrior uh, doesn't have the king to follow, then he becomes a mercenary. And it's just like you see suddenly how they all switch mm -hmm. over. So if, if the king isn't at his center within our own castle, then the warrior just can, can cause havoc and chaos on, in our life. And um, it's a beautiful analogy. It can really resonate with a man, I think, because, you know, it's based on Carl Jung's uh, work. Mm -hmm. And he, he believed that um, this mythology lives within our very subconscious. So, so, you know, we watch modern day superhero movies now, which were the equivalent of Greek story tales, you know, and, and we can resonate and we love that good meets evil and we can see these characters of magician and king and warrior mm. and all play out so it's a fascinating mix and one that i really feel helps men on their path yeah no I, and i appreciate you breaking it down and it sounds really fascinating to the point where i'm inspired to now look into this uh <laughs> it's really cool and i guess when you talk about the superhero movies you know one of the things like i've been trying to point out to even my son is like you know it's interesting, depending on what angle you look at the movies from, but you see the inner struggle the superheroes all encounter, you know, and, and you see that character development and how they're able to finally get to the point where they acknowledge their own uh, tendencies, like you said, where you kind of move from the shadows. Um, and when they finally accept that they have these shadows is when they're able to uh, counter it best and and finally achieve that, you know, the storybook ending. Absolutely. No one got enlightened in visiting figures of white light, right? Again, <laughs> Carl Jung. It's like yeah. every superhero, you know, let's take Star Wars, for instance. They, you need to understand the dark side and know it's there for you to, to kind of transcend it. And, and become a Jedi. And it's like, this is, this is beautiful. Like it's, you're, you're so right. In so many movies, it's at that point where he, he almost realizes his own immortality as well. And, and, and the, the, the destruction that he could cause with his own power that he chooses not to go down that path. And mm -hmm. yeah, I think a man can resonate with that so much. Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. And I guess going back to the archetypes you spelled out, like, for, and one of the things I wanted to understand a little bit more is we, do we all experience all a bit of all the archetypes and how do you kind of find the right balance? Yeah. Um, so I think say for instance, like going back to the King, the tyrant King or the, the weakling Prince, there will be one that resonates with you more, but you will also, uh, have a little bit of the other and you know we're doing the warrior right now this week in our in our men's training and so we have the sadist and the the sadist is the man that enjoys taking uh, uh causing pain to mm -hmm. others right so he is the man that that bosses people around and really dominates and, and inflicts this insulting barrage of abuse on others and loves it mm -hmm. and uh, he is also the workaholic in the office that just drives over his own body and his emotions. And the bipolar part to, to that shadow is the masochist, who is the doormat. He allows people to walk over him. And he is the man in the office that just says yes to everyone. Mm -hmm. So you, you have the masochist uh, one day getting his boundaries crossed and exploding after years and years of denying his own emotions. And what does he do? He goes straight back to the sadist again. Mm -hmm. He becomes the sadist. So we, we are always kind of fluctuating in between these, these, these parts. And of course, one side of the pendulum then suddenly swings the other way. And we see this playing out. So in answer to your question, yes, we, we are all of them in all different flavors in all the different times fluctuating from minute to minute, second to second, mm -hmm. um, depending on how aware of our shadows we are. Right. And, and I guess for people that do struggle with that, uh, cause I think, you know, when you're not mindful, like, and if I were to kind of relate it back to myself, I've been in those situations where I just, I'm like you said, swinging back and forth mm -hmm. and it's just, it's just so toxic because you're like, you're just trying to find or ground yourself, but you don't know how. Mm. Um, and you, like you said, you, you feel like, 
everyone's taking advantage of you, you're a doormat. So you respond by just overcompensating. Um, and, and I think you touched on, you know, even with yourself, just setting healthy boundaries, being comfortable with saying no. Are there other things like people can do to find that balance within themselves? Like what are some things they can do? And I know you've talked about mindfulness, but is that kind of what helped you in that space? Yeah. Um, what else can people do? For, for me, uh, meditation and mindfulness has been key because I've been able to observe everything, you know, from the place of, of the witness, you can start to see all of the shadow parts where you're, where you are self-sabotaging, where you are allowing energy leakages to come out. Um, then we go back to the body and the physicality. Well, obviously if we're, we're, we're sleeping right, if we're eating right, and we're looking after ourselves in the right way, then we're going to be more present and show up. And all of those things are a consequence of how much we love ourselves and how much we really care for this vehicle, right? That, that we're driving around in. And that's hard to train yourself to look after this vehicle in our young, uh, you know, teens and twenties, the body kind of like looks after itself. But even now at 34, I'm starting to notice like certain things that are slowing down and I'm like, Oh shit, I really got to look after this beautiful thing that, that, that has held me all this, this time. And so, yeah, I think breaking it, breaking it all down from the, the physical to the mental and cognitive and then the the spiritual and everyone is different so different things will resonate for different people um, some people will be able to sit and meditate other people will have to do active meditation some people um, will find their meditation through sport or mm -hmm. through exercise other people will find their way through um, meditation or, or, or psychedelics plant plant medicines you know these these openings that you can have through ceremonial uh, aspects as well um it's not kind of a one size fits all it's it's whatever resonates with you depending i think you know on your dosha if, you, if we're working with the ayurvedic system or or the or the chakra system in in yoga mm -hmm. or or um different uh elements you know if we're working with the the, the more like a chinese system so mm -hmm. there's a lot that can be used <laughs> yeah yeah and I, I think uh another important thing you touched on is meditation can be in many different forms it doesn't always have to be uh you sitting in a dark room with your eyes closed and just you know how media or the movies make it look um it could be even while you're walking and you're meditating and i think the key they, and from my perspective, uh, everyone's experience could be different. But from my perspective, it's finding stillness in your mind and not necessarily your body, right? It's finding that stillness in your mind where you can just pause and look at things. Um, and like you said, understanding what are the, the negative energies that are coming in um, or the, you know, the toxic energy potentially. So finding that stillness in your mind and really reflecting on how can I find that balance um, and, and live in alignment. Yeah. And I, I would even say it's not even the stillness of the mind. The stillness of the mind is a subsequent uh, act that happens from wherever we are shining our awareness. And if our awareness is sh being shone onto the present moment using Oh, the sound or using the touch or using the smell. So coming back to the now, you know, then as a byproduct of that, the mind goes whew, and then the silence is felt. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yes. So in, instead of like trying to force the mind to be quiet, which a lot of people get, uh, they, they trip up when they first start meditating. They, they think, you know, I've got to stop thinking. Well, yeah, that's that's hard you know don't think of a pink elephant boom pink elephant comes up in the yeah. in the in the mind so it's like uh actually shining our consciousness on the present reduces in in yoga we'd call it vasanas or samskaras these habitual patterns of the mind yeah it slows them down mm -hmm. and gradually you come into an awareness that maybe you're not used to um because you're not 
used to living it that kind of mindful mm -hmm. life and it feels amazing <laughs> yeah yeah and i think uh, again like you said like for people that are starting out with meditation uh it is hard because your mind is racing and you're not used to that you know just sitting or or just sitting uh, being in that place of just uh finding that stillness so thoughts will come and even like you know um i don't meditate as much as i would like but uh over time you do get better at processing thoughts and they still keep coming but it's letting them pass and accepting them for what they are right absolutely yeah, yeah. and and not feeling bad that oh i'm just thinking about things now i can't meditate it's it's sticking with it right and processing those thoughts yeah and the the deeper you go into meditation the more you're going to unearth as well and 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 that you know can sound scary at first but actually it's it's really quite beautiful like um i i remember meditating uh quite deeply uh last year and there was a moment where i really i really like got a strong uh not a voice in my head but a strong vasana like a, of old that was very negative it was a it was a deep one and it said i hate you you know it was this thought like i i hate you and it always touched the surface layer it always been around but i started to get to the core of it and and once i started to realize that there was a part of me that hated myself then i can bring it into the light and i can really transcend it and i knew it was always there but i was maybe like I say, not touching the root. And the deeper you go, you can start to really de-weed your garden and, mm -hmm. and, and see the core of this wound, of this lack of self-love or lack of trust or lack of belief in yourself. And you can transcend these limiting beliefs and you can change your life quite simply. And that will be, uh, uh, your body will change as a consequence. It will be the catalyst to change your body as well, because we are living organisms and every cell in our body is alive and responds to our awareness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's yeah. And I think that's important to touch on the, this whole idea of the hate that comes in, you know, whether it's a thought or through our actions. And I think a lot of us experience it because we tend to do things that are harmful to us, whether it's our minds or even our bodies. Um, do you mind touching on that a little bit more in terms of, you know, when you started getting to the root, what were some of the things you were able to find and kind of navigate through it? Um, I think for me, it was like addiction, self-worth. Um, like I would sabotage. Um, I, I've, I had strong, um, uh, energies about i wasn't worthy of receiving so when we say receiving we think oh like maybe that's money well yeah that's that's one thing that's how it will show up in your life but actually receiving everything from receiving a gift of a friend re receiving pleasure from your lover like if you can't receive then you you're gonna close off the availability of abundance in your life which is everywhere so you're gonna see the life your life through these spectacles of like I'm not worthy. And that of course is coming from this lack of self-love, this lack of self-respect. So as I dug deeper and deeper and deeper, I started to see like, it was almost like a cancer in every area and every thought process and every byproduct of my life. And the more I could de-weed and pull out, it wasn't just, oh, let's look at money issues or let's look at sex issues or let's look at um, you know, receiving a compliment, it was, it was like, let's look at all of this as a big, broader scale. And, and how do I do that? I do that through spending time with myself. And, and again, coming back to what we said earlier, like loving myself, taking that time, the same way that I would treat my best friend or my partner, treating my body or myself like that and it's a muscle and it's hard and you have to flex it every day and you know i go i go and run a bath now and i'm like instead of just running a bath i'm like i'm worthy of bubble bath you know i'm worthy of a of a candle or a you know, you know like some incense right because i yeah. do that for my girlfriend if she was if i was going to run her a bath but for me i'd be like oh, i'll just put some water in you know and and like these little examples are quite funny you know same with like dinner that i i cook you know if i was to cook a meal for a friend they'd come over i'd, I'd cook them a beautiful meal and if it was me i'd just throw some 
some toast on and you know off I go and it's like no slowing it down looking after myself being kind and respecting and yeah it's it's a long hard process and one I'm still learning as I'm sure you are but um mm. it can and will change your life yeah no I I that was amazing how you explained it and thank you for sharing that I think it's important because you know we all kind of struggle with it in different ways and and like you said, it is a lot of hard work, but it's needed, right? You can choose to stay where you are and just, just, you know, like you said, your body keeps the score. It's going to show up or you can do the hard work. And like you said, it's, it's, it's like going to the gym and doing weights. You're not going to see the results right away. Um, but over time you will. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, the even how far that I've come, like I, I felt like I knew so much arriving back in England last March. You know, after living, I was out in Thailand for two years. I was really enjoying my life out there. I was around a spiritual community. Lived in my my flip flops. Was coaching people around the world. It, you know, I thought I got it made. It was like all, all gravy, and then. Uh, coming back and having to face the uncertainty of the last year as we all have mm -hmm. the struggles the the closing down of the the human emotional heart that we've you know there's a lot of fear currently around and you know to not allow that to enter your nervous system is uh, a minefield and you really have to keep your energy higher than ever right now to protect yourself and it's been a huge learning curve so whenever you think you are <laughs> or you, you've got to a stage where you're like ah you know i'm pretty good i know quite a lot and it's like nope i'm just gonna throw a huge bag of new new idea i had a like last year i had an eye injury from a surf accident which i nearly went blind and that that taught me so much about you know internally seeing even more through meditation and not looking through my actual eyes and seeing mm -hmm. the world from a whole perspective so I think life just always brings you these challenges and these these obstacles and it's how we respond to them right it's how mm -hmm. we can use our tools from our tool books to to uh get through and to stay um lighter and not let ourselves go into a spiral yeah you know i couldn't agree more and i think recognizing that you may not have all the tools at, at some point either and and I'm trying to understand how can you acquire those tools and you know like for a lot of people meditation is not a tool they have in their toolbox so it's trying to figure it out and, and working through it right whether uh even with yoga not a, everyone's comfortable doing it or, or being in that vulnerable space around other people mm -hmm. um so again like we covered I feel like we've come full circle here but that's where the most growth happens is stepping out of that comfort zone. Absolutely. And that's why I think, you know, in relating this back to men's work is like as grow growing up, I found myself feeling more comfortable around women. And, you know, I got brought up by a sister and my mother, I would hang out with men in playing football or, or soccer. Uh, and then I would go home and it would always be very light hearted and not, uh, not, not really like there wasn't a true connection there. And as I got older, I really craved a deep connection with men mm -hmm. and going into the uncomfortable of like asking a man like, Hey, do you want to go out like for a, a walk is, you know, that's quite a big deal for guys. They're like, <laughs> Oh my God, like I can't ask another dude out. You know, it's, it's, it's just like, and, and, and feeling the uncomfortableness that comes with that, you know? And yeah all the fears that come, I'm not, I'm not homosexual and all of this. And, and which is, you know, it's absolutely fine if you are, but, you know, but, but it's such a deep fear in men to, to, to show affection, to show love for another, another man. I have a, 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 a friend of mine that he still struggles to say, I love you to another man. You know, he, he says things like, you know, you'll go, you'll go well, you, you, you'll, you'll go far. You will, you know, like, yeah, you're, you're, you're a good guy, you know, and it's just like yeah. these blockages and, and we, we crave and we need male connection as men. It's so important. We can't get everything we need from the female, the same mm -hmm. as the female can't get everything they need from the male. We mm -hmm. need to, to hang out. If you're, if you're a, a woman with your sisters and if you're a man with your brothers, like you, 
you need that in your life and you need to sit with the uncomfortableness of hanging out in those groups and what it triggers in you and you know i always encourage very feminine men in my men's work to go and hang out with very masculine men and mm -hmm. encourage uh, very masculine men to go and hang out with very feminine men and 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 see what that triggers in them because it will bring up a whole load of shadow yeah <laughs> that they weren't aware of yeah for sure for sure and i i yeah i mean that's very important and finding that brotherhood is is also essential right now where again where men are trying to be more aware and feeling vulnerable i think it comes with uh building that brotherhood and being comfortable with each other so you know i i'm glad you shared that and you know we've got a connection here right so yeah, absolutely yeah, for <laughs> sure <great. laughs> i got a new friend the other side of the world i love yeah. it it's good you know it's amazing and you know uh, again i want to thank you for coming on here sharing your story uh you know sharing some of the work you're doing it's amazing and i love the energy you have like i said it's it's really positive it's contagious um and i can just feel it on my end too so um, I know you're doing a lot of work in this space. So for people that want to find you or get a hold of you, what's the best way um, through social media, through the group work you're doing? Like, what are some of the things people can do to find you? Um, so my main uh, transformational website is Alexander Cottle. So Alexander and then C-O-T-T-L-E dot com. And you can find all my offerings there from retreats to circles to mixed circles, men's work uh meditation etc and coaching and then um my big passion uh, is a global wide wider project which is uniting brothers all around the world which is the unmasked man and uh, you can find us at www.theunmaskedman.co.uk and um yeah just deeply passionate now about bringing men together and to shed the layers shed the masks and be seen in in truth mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you've obviously for you and i we connected on instagram so you're also uh social media presence and yeah yeah, yeah. alexander underscore cotto is my um uh my main account and then my unmasked man account is the dot unmasked man yeah you can find me there Thanks. And any last words? Uh, again, you know, I, I know you shared a lot, but anything you want to get out there for for all the brothers out there that are struggling right now, whether it's pandemic related or, or, you know, even with the pandemic, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, men are struggling with, whether it's putting food on the table, uh, just being able to ask for help, yep. all that kind of stuff. Like, what would you like to say to our brothers out there? I would say that you're not alone that um also to to be kind be kind to yourself during this period depression seven years on is something that um i believe will never go away it it, it comes back uh in a little little uh sections or segments in my life still but it's how i respond to them it's, it's the tools in the toolbox again and it's facing them and you know i always um want men to understand that there's men out there that are changing the face of what it is to be a man and that if they find the right group they can they can really go on an absolutely incredible journey to discover themselves and i just encourage them if they're having this nervousness to reach out or to approach or to explore especially the spiritual side or the esoteric side or you know that the, the, there's gold to be found there and to 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 make that jump because um yeah it will change your life i believe for the better no that's beautiful thank you again um you know i appreciate you coming on here and, and having this conversation thank you it's been an absolute pleasure and i have a new friend in canada <laughs> yes <laughs> i'm just gonna end the recording here <laughs>